Hey guys, welcome to Zeus Master of Olympus, the classic city, bu city builder from Impressions. And the only classic city builder, well, from Caesar 3 to Emperor, that I never played. So today, I'm going to be going through the tutorial, because there's an actual tutorial in this game, which is incredibly handy. So from what I can tell, Zeus was after Pharaoh, right? And it actually feels like this really weird middle point between Pharaoh and Emperor, where also weirdly, there are things in Zeus which I think would have been a good idea to keep. And that has to stop. Okay. So some things are here which aren't in Emperor, but then also Emperor had things that aren't here. Emperor was the last game in the series and uh, I think it was developed by two companies. So some things are different with Emperor. Uh, especially that, that because I think it was developed by multiple companies, that's why it's not on GOG. And it's the only one not on GOG. So I've never played Caesar 1 or 2 either, but I, I see those as different games. Caesar 3, Pharaoh, Zeus, Emperor are sort of a series which play very similarly, but uh, somewhat differently. And uh, Zeus is sort of like this mythological approach to what is traditionally a historical series. So I see it very much like the Age of Empires series and then they had Age of Mythology. Right? So, Age of Mythology, I, I think both these games were, like Age of Mythology and this one were both about early 2000s, and I think it was a, a theme back then to go a bit more mythological. So I'm gonna go ahead and play Zeus with you, I've pr created a profile there, and there's the tutorials. And I need to learn what's actually different. So today we'll be going through this really, well, as quick as possible. When, when we're going through things that we already know, we'll skip ahead. When we uh, encounter something new, we'll pay a bit more attention to it. Alright, welcome to the stream. GameTube123, yay yay, the King of Kings, Lauren Steele, Julian Munch, Shizad Kenobi. Good to have you on this little journey. Beginning tutorials, housing and people. So I'm not just gonna read through everything, but I'll skim through it. Welcome to the first Zeus tutorial. Uh-huh. So this interface is really what needs to be gotten used to, because all these buttons are new to me. <laughs> uh, we gotta figure it all out. Uh, we're gonna exit this screen, roads and walkers. So we can just skip straight to the next tutorial whenever we want. Open play, no episode goals. Laying out roads, okay, okay. Uh, this is maintenance, hazards, Alright, so this should... Oh, the speed's stuck up there. So, things should uh, look good. This is widescreen fixer, of course. We'll get this into widescreen. When do I not? Um, so, houses. Yeah, I had a quick look at the game. Houses work more like Emperor than they do... ...than Pharaoh. They, they actually have these 2x2 two two blocks. We also have maintenance fountains. Okay. Maintenance office. I think it's just... There's no fires, it's just whether they collapse or not, I think. Okay, uh, one thing that did throw me off when I noticed this immediately when I was testing the game. A new city, a new home, and maybe a new job. Fortune is smiling upon me. A lot of people are down on their luck and out of work. Zeus has American accents, which is... Uh, Something I was not expecting at all, uh, because Caesar 3 had British accents because they're Roman and traditionally in media, Romans are depicted with British accents. In Pharaoh, they had sort of Egyptian accents. In Emperor, they had sort of Chinese accents. But in uh, Greece, yeah, in Zeus, they have American accents. So it feels very much like Disney's Hercules, honestly, you know, where, where it's Greece, uh, Greek aesthetic, but this sort of... Uh, Somewhat stereotypical American like accents and stuff. They have these these you know very stereotypical accents as far as I can tell so far. Like let's check these water guys. Workers, workers everywhere, and not a job to take. Well, if water carrying weren't a two-person job, I'd be out of work too. <laughs> See what I mean? Anyway, this seems to be good to go. Let me let me just have a quick look at. We can see all of that. Where is the mini map? 
Oh, the, the minimap is actually on a separate thing. Okay. So we got roadblocks, that's good to know. Okay, we do have roadblocks. That's clear, that's undo. That's rotate. This is a message thing. Okay. I think we're good. Next tutorial. Oh, it just goes straight. Okay, perfect. Producing food. People need to eat. Fishing. Should be straightforward enough. Roadblocks, yep. So, okay, this tutorial, it provides a working area, so it allows us to... Agora's food vendor. So there's the granary. And there is a fishery. So if I do this... Does this get employment? It does! This has taken, like, it's it's moved from Pharaoh to Emperor, where in Emperor you don't need access to housing. Your, your buildings just get employment. But I assume it still suffers from... Uh, like, we still need to, to put a maintenance office, right? Right? That thing will eventually collapse. And why is my computer buzzing again? There we go. <laughs> uh, yes, okay. So it does still require something like that. Okay, okay. Zeus is where they took out the guy that searches for workers in the vicinity. Yeah, the, in Caesar 3 there's a brown walker, in Pharaoh there's the, the, the white guy, the white walker. The white walker. <laughs> but, um, okay, so that's how we produce food. Same thing as before, this is all, yeah, fish, get, empty, don't accept, all the same. Let's move on. Next tutorial. The Agora. The Agora is the central marketplace of the neighborhood. Okay, building the granary, building the agora, adding a food vendor. So this is, yeah, it, it's closer to, um, yeah, it's closer to Emperor, where the marketplace actually, yeah, it connects to the road like that. So we can do that. We can do that. And add a food vendor, right. And I assume there's a higher level agora, like a, uh, that doubles to six slots rather than three for elite housing. What is it you wanted, Mrs. Pericles? Ah, yes, here you go. I can't wait to pick out the finest food for my customers. I wouldn't want them to go hungry. Yep. <laughs> that, that does take some getting used to. I wasn't expecting American accents. Not that American accents are bad. It's just I wasn't expecting it, that's all. <sighs> I hope my hair is not transparent. That tyranny stream Somehow, just when I was reviewing, I couldn't see it on the preview window. I'm looking. My hair is not transparent, right? For those of you watching in 720 or 1080, let me know if my hair is transparent. Uh, the Grand Agora, right. Have to keep an eye on appeal. I think we're not... Yeah, aesthetics is down there. Okay. I think we understand how this works. These people, like, really... We're distributing food. Yeah, those houses... Some of these houses should evolve. More culture venues to evolve, right, okay. We can move on. Culture and appeal. Houses develop, so this philosophy, this build a college podium in your neighborhood by selecting it and clicking the philosophy button. Athletics, appeal, okay. We can learn this pretty quick. So I assume, the college sends things to podiums. There's already one here. <laughs> um, college. See philosophers. Yeah. So the college sends philosophers to podiums. And the gymnasium is just... Is just a building, I think. So if I... Uh, let's get rid Why did that... No. Here, put that, okay. And if I put the college there and the podium here, that should function perfectly, correct? 
athletics, so there's actors and competitors as well. Oh, competitors come from there. So this, this should... Yeah, so that's just a building. This, yeah, it sends to the podium. No problem. And we also get the aesthetics. Ah, appeal. Neutral appeal. So we have... Oh, there's like little, uh, little things we can put. This is, yeah, this is... And then of course we got parks. Which we can just... Yep. Okay. Parks are parks. Fantastic. Next tutorial. Hygiene and safety. Unrest and plague. So this was in Pharaoh. Unrest and plague. Uh, uh, the former leader. Blah, blah, blah. Dealing with unrest. Watchmen. Okay. So that's like policemen or the watchtowers and emperor. Infirmaries and healers. Providing food. Okay. So if we go here. We can provide infirmaries. So we can, uh, so it's pretty much, uh, everything we know. It's just the buildings are somewhat different. Watch post. So we gotta put a watch post in each area. And, uh, providing food, it said. So if we wanted to solve these problems, we just need to feed people. Oh, there's some. There we go. Do you feel lucky? Punk. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I did notice just when testing out the game. There's so much voice acting like what the lines that are being said actually change when their action changes Like if you, that guy he said that because he was fighting the the rioter There's a lot of unrest in the city. So let's be careful out there Kojakilon very good All right, and that should actually, like, all the, the information is sort of shown here. Unrest. There is some unrest in the city. Well, this is handy. Current food production can and importation can support 1,200 people. Plenty. Okay, that, that's, that's good to have. Uh, is this game free? No, it's not free, but it's really cheap on GOG.com. It should be at most six US dollars, but it's often on sale in uh, certain bundles all by itself, and you could often get it for like two bucks. Honestly, that's not a lot of money. If you want to play it, just buy it. It's, it's easy. The widescreen game fixer, uh, you can find it if you search widescreen game fixer Zeus. Um, it should still be there. There's a W. SGF website. And I think we actually solved everything on this map. Looks good. All right, let's move on. If you're just joining the stream, welcome. Uh, we are learning how to play Zeus because I want to start up a Zeus series on the channel because Pharaoh and Emperor, the missions are way too difficult right now. They, they take way too long. I wanted to start up Zeus with an easy campaign or something. So at least I got some classic city building going, but I've never ever played Zeus before. It's all new to me. Like, when I started my Caesar 3 series, it's because I loved it as a kid. I played Caesar 3, Pharaoh, and Emperor growing up. So I, I remember that. Less of Emperor, but I still remembered it and understood the mechanics. Zeus I never even touched. I didn't know it existed. I think everyone sort of, everyone who played these games missed one, right? For those of you who played these games in chat right now, for those of you who played the games, any of you played all four of these growing up? Like C Caesar 3, Pharaoh, Zeus, and Emperor. Did anyone play all four? That's the, the order they came out. And someone asked, Nisimba asked, was Zeus after Emperor? No, Emperor was the last one. Emperor had multiplayer. That, that's how modern it was. They were trying to put multiplayer into it. Uh, Manson, never played Caesar? The lack of roadblocks kills me. Yeah. Uh, just a tip, gatehouses are roadblocks. <laughs> Most didn't play Emperor, I think. Al M didn't play Emperor. Caesar 3, Pharaoh, and Zeus, yeah. Oh, there was a three pack. Garrison Bengston got a three pack, no Emperor. Emperor wasn't part of the three pack. Ah, oh, I didn't know. All right. 
Emperor is cool, but uh, I think the complication with its development caused some issues. Uh, anyway, goods for housing. Okay, so this already, yeah, <laughs> this sort of stuff is very different. Producing fleece. First place a carding shed next to a road. Okay. Then select sheep, place sheep in the meadow. So meadows are purple this time, not yellow. Uh-huh. Close the cutting shed to the sheep pasture, less distance. Storing fleece into storehouses, I think. Stockpiling, distributing fleece from the market. Okay. So this. This is the thing that's that's really new to me. Um, so we get these carding sheds. And then you have to actually place sheep on the meadow add shepherds to increase the flock so if we put more of these we can put more sheep down that's quite a lot how many sheep is it to each carding shed one two three four five six seven eight 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 sheep to each shed and they just harvest the fleece, and then it's stored in the storehouse. And then we have a fleece distributor. Okay. You only need one square of meadow and you can spam infinite sheep on that one square. Ah. Huh. So this is, yeah, this is sort of like, you know, going out, sending workers out to, to harvest wood or papyrus or something, but... Uh, the resource actually moves around a little bit. So I'm assuming these sheep do actually block structures, right? That yeah. So that could cause some problems if we want to put farms on there. I'm assuming there are farms. Okay. Was there anything else we needed to know? No, I think that's good. Let's move on. Making olive oil. Olive oil is needed by a city's household and is produced by a two-step process. So is this oil pretty much like oil in Caesar? Growing olives? Orchard button. Okay, so orchards were an emperor. But does this work the same? I don't think so. I'm looking at that orchard over there. Must be grown in a meadow. Okay. Distributing oil, lab labor, workers, and wages. Okay, without... So we should be able to affect wages on the... Industry tab, yep, okay, it's there. Does it affect our employment? It does. So if I drop this to low, it should deal with some of the unemployment. Okay, now, these things. Uh, orchards, olive trees. So we actually place the olive tree individually. Right. And there's no limit. But we have to place growers lodge, lodges to actually go and work the trees and under industry workshops there's the olive press okay the nice thing about these industry buildings not sending out a walker to get people it's the same in emperor but uh, this is one of the best improvements because you can place a building here and you don't have to worry about that walker walking down this road it just works this this building just works properly it's nice Barbulas asks, have I ever played Rise of Nations? I did. Long time ago. Haven't played it recently. Ah. Guardian asks, was, uh, says, was wondering when I was going to do some Zeus. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll start some Zeus after I, I learn all the things. I think we've got olive oil down. Let's go to the next one. Okay, build a city. 50 people in an apartment or better. Episode goals, uh-huh, getting started. Seems good. Oh, spilled a bit of coffee. Will I be playing Age of Empires 3? I don't know, I don't really like, well, I didn't really like Age of Empires 3. Uh, it's my least favorite Age of Empires. I'd rather do some Age of Mythology, then cycle back and do some Age of Empires 1 and 2. So we just have let's let's just build a city. Let's see how much of what we know is accurate. Just gonna put I'm not gonna min max anything here. We're just gonna go Well we're not gonna do that. <laughs> we are actually gonna build a block though. Uh we will fix that. 
So we get some people to move in. We'll probably need more. And then roadblock right here. Safety buildings, I assume. If I do this, that would be a bad idea, right? Unless I put another roadblock there. Maintenance office can go there. So does this walker, will this mess up the walker as usual? I assume it does. Come on, where's the, where's the water guy? Yeah, okay, that messes up. So we'll put a roadblock there. We'll need an inf... Oh no, we don't need... Let's put a watch post. So we need to get some food going. So we can start with some fisheries. We got 100 people. So this road can do... This. And we'll roadblock that. And here, I assume this all works the same. And we can put a granary down there. We'll set this to just accepting fish. We've only got one type of food. We have a shortage of workers. So we're gonna need to put down distribution, agoras, common agora. So that fits there, and then the food vendor would go there. Okay. And does it actually say how much we're currently producing z food for zero people? So these, they actually need to build a fish. Fisheries are your staple source of food. So the boats are going out, it still says zero. Manson says, love the Age of Empires 3 because of the 3D graphics. Also, trains love the trade route mechanic. Yeah, I think the trade thing was was quite interesting. It's just, I just didn't really... I didn't, I couldn't get into it. I didn't like it as much. Luke Fontanelli needs to go. Good night. You showed a French flag there, so I'm assuming you're French, which means it would be like 3 a.m. for you. <laughs> so how much fish are we producing here? Like, three fisheries. Like, I'm, I assume this, this number will update once the food is put into our granary. Have I ever played Railroad Tycoon? No, I haven't, actually. Ah. So, here's the first bit of food coming in. Oh, it drops it off there. It doesn't have that thing where it has to go. So that supports 800 people. Right, okay. This number is very useful. So if that supports 800 people, this is getting people. What do these people say? Have you ever seen more solid buildings? Archimedes would be proud. So the vendor was like, hurry up with those goods. And I was like, whatever. The vendor's such a dark. So did you see that wrestling match last night? Milo, like, totally smacked down his opponent. Nike must have been on his side. All right. I think pretty much all the dialogue I've heard so far is quite comedic. I think there's a sort of a lighthearted tone to things here. All right, so this upgrades huts to shacks. And they need more culture to expand. So we can put a gymnasium right there next to the food vendor. After a hard day of working out, you could just eat right there. So this should upgrade the houses from shacks to something else. So this is houses 20? So it goes from, no, no, 8 to 16. Yeah, 8 to 16. Come on, send out a, send out a guy. So this goes to hovels. And it needs appeal to grow further. That's fine. Let's do that. And then they need fleece. So that goes from 8 to 24. Okay. So 
Getting food to people essentially triples our population. And then they need fleece. Which we can just extend this road out like that. Roadblock there. Put down the maintenance office at the end. And we can go straight into some... Carding sheds. So you can just spam all the sheep onto the same tile. And then we'll need a storehouse right there. And this is accepting fleece and olive oil. Okay, all this works the same. Good. GameTube123 says, Welcome to Zeus's and Poseidon's dialogue. Yeah, it seems a lot more comical than the others. Um, I think after making Caesar 3 and Pharaoh, they were a bit tired of the seriousness of their games, and then they made this. And then they went to Emperor, and it was just back to very serious, actually. There was a, there was a little bit of uh, joking around in Emperor, but not too much. Nothing like this. The dialogue definitely seems inspired by Hercules and Xena television series of the day. They were both American production. Yeah. Says Manson. Yeah, I'm thinking it's very Disney Hercules. <laughs> and yeah, Xena, Warrior Princess. Um, Hercules, a TV show. Disney's Hercules. What else was on back then? Which was uh, that sort of mythological sort of shows. <laughs> the symbol to the marsh I march for the reeds we need. Yeah, but even that, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice little line in Pharaoh for the papyrus gatherers. Well, the reed gatherers, rather. But it's not, it's not like a, a silly joke. It's just sort of like a, a whistle while I work sort of thing. Okay, so what is our objective here? We need fleece. And then we'll also need some orchards. So olive trees. So we could just, like... If I fill, like, all this up, and fill all that up, and then I just put growers' lodges, and then olive presses. Like, this, this should be, this should be good, right? That should be enough? We need more workers, so I could raise the wage rates, solve our employment problems. Doesn't affect it too much, but once the fleece starts coming in, we should have the people we need. Are there priorities? See industry? No. Um, what's this? See more information? There we go. Priorities. Hygiene and safety. Everything's set to very high. Operating normally. We're just a little short of people here and there. We have 360 people. Now, under food, it says we're producing enough food for 1,200. It seems like we do actually have enough food. So if we get rid of that, that's for 800. So each fishery produces enough food for 400 people. I think it takes into account the, the walking distance of the cart pushers. Yeah, th those shows, Xena and Hercules weren't known for being serious, yeah. <laughs> I think the developers just needed a break. Alright, so we're starting to get some fleece in, which means we can put down a fleece vendor. And we can might as well go ahead and put down an oil vendor. Now, where is the... Nine workers needed, that's fine. We're gonna upgrade these houses very soon. There we go. We need fleece. Time to buy some more. Okay, lines like that are just neutral lines. I assume, since the dialogue's been so heavy so far, the line actually changes when he comes back. Careful! This fleece is for the Agora. If you rip it ease, you mend it ease. <laughs> I am impressed by the amount of dialogue in Zeus so far that I've encountered. There's like multiple lines for every walker, depending on what they're doing. So the shepherds should have lines as well, right? I love the smell of freshly cut fleece in the morning. 
No wolf will catch my sheep, not while I'm here anyway. That's a question. Are wolves still a thing? There's no wolves here. I'm not sure if wolves are still a thing. It's uh it's a little tricky with no like the minimap being on a separate tab. What does this do? Workforce allocation. Oh, this is still on industry. Wait, so this is like we have the tabs on the left, and then this replaces this with the minimap? That's kind of weird. Why why isn't the minimap just filling up this slot down here? Strange. Anyway, these have evolved, and they need more culture venues to go further. And before we forget, we should put down an infirmary. Which we can... Squeeze right here. And then, we need to make room... Oh no, there's some room there, it's fine. We can put culture... Philosophy, the college can go back here. And the podium can go right there. So the destination walker technique should still work, right? Like this should send out the walker to that side? Ah. Now where's the... yeah, there we go. The city's problems aren't just rhetorical, but it could be worse. So the destination walker still works. You can see these houses evolving. And they need more appeal to evolve further, can I assume these structures work better. And we can get rid of some of these uh, worse houses. Now they need olive oil. So olive oil should be... Oh, it requires... This city isn't the pits, but it could be better. January. So the harvest is in January, so we can speed up the game here. Employment. 41 unemployed. We can actually delete some houses. There we go. And we can replace them with flower gardens. Now, it's January, so the... There we go, we're harvesting. So that just harvests the oil into these uh, growers' lodges. And it seems like I am overproducing here. But these trees that this weren't city harvested isn't the pits, but it could be better. These trees that weren't harvested, do they die off again or do they just maintain where they were? I think they maintain. It's March already and uh, I'm trying to click on these trees. Yeah, they're still 86% ripe, whereas these which were harvested reset. So we can actually overplace these and there's just always like ripe trees to harvest. Anyway, olive oil is coming through here. More olive oil coming right up. Okay, reduce wages. Oh, re oh I forgot to reduce wages. <laughs> We're still on very high. GameTube says, found Zeus and Poseidon to be the most pretty of the impression game series. It's uh, it's certainly the most colorful, but I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. We got apartments. 360 to qualify, yeah. Did it. Proceed, we built a small city. With the completion of the fine city, you're ready to embark upon the advanced Zeus tutorials. You can come back and review this anytime. Okay. So we're, we're gonna go to the advanced tutorials now. All right, fantastic. Hmm. Welcome to the first advanced tutorial for Zeus. If you've completed the beginning tutorials or played one of your city building of our city building games before, this is a good place to start. Okay. For a refresher course plot basics, play that just now. Okay, good. Uh I mean, even if you have played one of these games before, the orchard mechanic and the sheep mechanic are, are new. And they're not even in Emperor either. The orchards sort of became just like farms. Actually, no. Orchards uh, and farms in Emperor sort of work like this. But you build a building and then you place the tiles within a certain range of that building. So I can see how this developed into what we had in Emperor. Okay. In this tutorial, you'll have some fun. Familiar with Zeus interface. Blah, blah, blah. Category tabs. Population. Uh, tabs relating to each city. Some of the category tabs are not available in this lesson. Uh-huh. 
husbandry, industry, distribution, hygiene and safety, administration, culture, mythology. That's the that's the new tab there. Military aesthetics overview. Take some time. Special city views. The various C buttons at the top. Okay. Uh, tap the spacebar to toggle special views on and off. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, fulfilling requests are in the overview tab. The overview map. Um, press the tab at the top of the control panel. Okay, that one. To return all types of normal information, you can also use the tab key on your keyboard. Oh, okay. There's some nice hotkeys here. Spacebar and tab. Messages. Yes. Go to buttons. Oh, so that's what those are. When an event happens, you can click on those too. Okay. So tab. Okay, that makes it a little easier. I still wish the minimap was just always there. I don't know why this is the only game which doesn't have that. But spacebar also toggles the C supplies of whatever your or C the C of whatever. It defaults to hygiene? Philosophers? Can I Okay, okay. So this is Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going then. Next tutorial. Trade. Okay. Let's see if anything's changed here. Manson is off to bed. Oh, yeah. You gotta go. Thanks for joining, Manson. Yearly profit of 500. Trade. You can buy goods from other cities, make money selling your city's products if you haven't maintained good relations with the leader of another city or if he's an outright rival. We don't want to trade with you. Click on the worldview. All right. And we're here on the trade tutorial. We gotta see if... Uh, things work the same or differently. Uh, did I have a good breakfast? I ate three biscuits. Uh, for the Americans out there, they're... Uh, I didn't eat crackers, they're not cookies. Um, they're just... They're like a somewhere between a, a cookie and a cracker. If that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, importing, trading post, step two, making sculpture, okay. So we gotta import a resource, bronze, make sculptures, sell the, br uh, sell the sculptures. Okay. Let's, uh, slow the game down a bit. So let's have a look at the world view here. So this is our city, Megara, Mantinea, and Cyprus. So they buy sculpture. They're a distant city. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, do excuse me for that. Um, ally, Mantinea. Leader, Xenophon. Sells bronze and olives. Cyprus buys sculptures. Okay. Uh, trade. I assume it's under distribution. Trade. Trading post Mantinea. Yep. Uh, Pier Cyprus. Oh, this is this is very emperor. This is very emperor. Um, so we're buying. Oh, you can just control it from here. Buying bronze, and we're selling sculpture. And I assume we have an industry workshop, sculpture studios, which we can just place along here. That might be overdoing it, but uh, need more jobs. Raise wages. Can these need more culture to evolve? Do they have a gym? They don't have a gym. We're not producing oil, but that's fine. Okay. Ah. My image isn't on the, the the right side of the screen um no it's just sort of um here because this is where it is for tyranny and caesar that's uh, not caesar civilization six i'm not sure whether this is a good place to put it but i think it's fine right uh reach 500 people Because sometimes if I if I put myself all the way over to the side, it can be a little weird. Maybe I should put myself here. 
Oh, well, whatever. I'm gonna just stay right here. It's fine. I can, it's like, yeah, I'm looking at things. This game isn't meant to be played in widescreen. Well, not originally. Uh, so, <laughs> there's actually plenty of room for my head to fit. Anyway, here we go. Some trade coming in. Bronze. Where's the traders? Uh, did I miss them? I think I missed them. Did they already come and go? That was quick. Anyway, all these uh, workshops are now working. So these sculpture studios turn bronze into statues. Okay. How about the right side? Put my face here. It's got that blank space. Yeah, but I don't really want me being with this bit here. That's kind of... Uh, by the way, yeah, okay. So this this is basically an, a blank area, which is uh, because the interface doesn't fit. I'm not sure if there's a widescreen fix to get the interface to fill that out. Like, uh, I used to use a, the, an old widescreen fixer for Pharaoh, which had a similar issue, but it became a big issue because the world map would overlap that. But in this, it doesn't, so it's fine. Um, but then Pharaoh got a new widescreen fixer by a guy named Crudelios, who actually fixed that much better. I'm not sure if there's a better one for Zeus. So, those are sculptures, they're huge! And we sell them off like that? I don't know how much money we made from that. <laughs> is, there, is there a way to see... Is that how much? 640? Is that 640 each? Because that's really expensive. On the cart, they look so small, look at that. But then when they get there, it's huge. I wonder why they didn't... Like, I wonder why they designed it to be covered with this uh, white cloth. Maybe because it, it would look too much like actual statues if... Because I'm sure there are statues that we can place later on. So all we have to do is make money on this. Yeah, yearly profit of 500. So we can speed it up. We just have to wait for the end of the year because I'm sure we've made 500. Ah, coffee is important. What is that? Wait. Oh, that's just the guy who's there. It's kind of weird because this one has a tower, but this one is not on a tower. So it looked like he was a resource. <laughs> I wonder what you build in Zeus Colossus. I don't know. Are there wonders? Are there wonders in... Uh, you build Pantheon to the gods. Okay. So we must have made... No, it's September. Can the game go any faster? We should be on 100% speed. Yeah, we're on 100%. This is the fastest it goes. Ah. <sighs> Classic city builders. They're just so relaxing to play, aren't they? Ah. <sighs> It's December, so we should be winning right about now. There we go. Did it. <laughs> Buying raw materials, selling them. Fantastic. We made like 5,000 there. There's no stats at the end of the, the mission. Next tutorial. The palace. Citizen soldiers. I heard about this. Apparently military is very different in Zeus. Citizen soldiers. Though you cannot build a standing army... Okay, that's already different. <laughs> Your ordinary citizens will fight to defend the city. Those from the lowest strata of society fight as rabble, armed with rocks to throw at the enemy. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to call your people to arms and command them in battle. By the way, uh, I'm currently live streaming Tyranny, right? As Not now, but I'm live streaming Tyranny. I'm playing through Tyranny. And I'm using Tyranny to practice my uh, narration speech because the dialogue and the writing in Tyranny is so fantastic. So uh, I'm using it to sort of be a bit more 
bassy, a bit more narrative when I speak. So this is this is sort of a what I'm using now is like a presentation voice, right? It's uh, slightly exaggerated. Don't go up to your your friends in real life and talk like this. <laughs> Can you imagine that? You go up to to your friends and you're you're all like. Hey, how are you doing? It's great to see you. Now, what have you been- that's just- no, don't do that. <laughs> do not do that in real life. It's great on camera. It's not great in real life. It's, it's rather annoying. Um, and it's actually a, a danger. Like, if you do a job like this, like presenting with your voice all the time, you could end up stuck speaking in that really annoying way, which seems okay when you're presenting, but it's terrible when you're talking to someone face to face. Right? So, but for tyranny, I'm practicing the, the sort of narration voice, right? So, you sort of get a bit closer to the mic. Then you uh, remove some of the vocal fry if you're that kind of speaker. And then you can soften your voice and go in a bit more, those deeper sultry tones. And then you could read, Citizen soldiers, though you cannot build a standing army, your ordinary citizens will fight to defend the city. <laughs> Or you could get really close to the mic. I'll just pick it up and go. Though you can't build a standing army, your ordinary citizens will fight to defend the city. Those from the lowest strata of society fight as rabble, armed only with rocks to throw at the enemy. Now, I, I actually don't have no idea what that sounds like coming out to you guys. <laughs> I, I've also seen people put it right up against the, the throat. I don't know, if, I don't know what this sounds like. If, if I do this, what happens? You're listening to my throat. Does this, uh, what does this do <laughs> if I talk like this? Though you can't build a standing army, your ordinary citizens will fight to defend the city. No idea. I can't hear it, only you can hear it. I have to watch the video afterwards. <laughs> Basically, the only thing you, you really need to, to know Sounds like you smoked for 20 years and had an operation. <laughs> I've never done that before, so I have no idea what it actually sounds like. I've never put the, the, the mic up to my throat before. It's like a robot's trying to mimic you. It's kind of muffled, yeah. <laughs> There's all sorts of mic techniques. There's uh, going up close to the mic that's actually called close miking because you are close to the mic. Uh, vocal fry is sort of the only thing you need to know about uh, for, for like starters. And in case you didn't know, vocal fry is the, 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 uh, so, um, I think American accents have a lot of vocal fry. They would, uh, speak like with this sort of uh, thing, which, uh, I tend to not like. I go in the opposite direction and I remove vocal fry. Except for a little bit in certain places. Like there. And there. Right here. <laughs> but for, generally I try to remove that because I find it clearer. And nicer to listen to. Anyway, we gotta build a palace. Okay, uh, for, from the administration tab, build a palace button. Even when you're going about your daily lives, the people of your city automatically divide themselves into military companies and place their standards around the palace. Rabble standards are capped by a fi uh, fist clenching a rock. Moving standards, calling the soldier to arms. So moving the standard doesn't work. You gotta call them to arms. Morale should be about the same. Giving orders to companies. So the special orders, invasions in this, the Mia will invade, okay. Automatically responding to invasions. There's an auto defend button. Huh. Frank M Muller, don't tell us all that stuff, you're taking the magic away. Ah, there's no magic in voice acting. Uh, there's no magic in, in presenting and all of that. It's just stuff you pick up. I mean, the magic is just the little things that you pick up as an individual that no one can teach you. That's the magic. Like, I can tell you all this stuff, but you still won't sound like me and I won't sound like you. There's the magic. Uh, the instructions must be given well in advance of invasion if you don't intend to control your military forces manually. Always leave auto-defend on. Hmm. Let's see if auto-defend works. Collecting taxes as well. Okay. So we gotta build... Let's slow the game down. We gotta build a palace. Administration palace. And we can rotate this building?
So that was a... Uh... Oh! So these are the battle standards. And what was that? We're gonna be invaded in... Seven months. Okay, we got plenty of time. So... Go to company, use defensive tactics, rotate company, use offensive tactics, employ special tactics, muster company. So this should... It actually brings troops. When our enemy gets here, I'll bring new meaning to clashing rocks. Is there an old meaning to clas clashing rocks? I'm not sure. Is that a saying? So you actually muster troops from your citizens. And under the military tab, there's this one. Military is under your personal control. Click for them to automatically defend the city. Click to muster all sorts. So that means, do I lose control? Yeah, I lose control. Click to muster all soldiers. If I do that, call all. Oh, okay, okay, I see that. Click to send all soldiers home. Do these have to be... Yeah, the banners... So the banners can be left out. If I put this to automatically defend the city, what does that actually do? Let's, let's see if the, the game can automatically defend my city. I'm not gonna touch the troops. See what happens. So much unemployment in these missions. <laughs> I should do a coffee commercial, maybe with some narration about the quality of Highland coffee and the hand picking. Coffee doesn't grow in the Highlands. It grows in the Lowlands, right? <laughs> Tea grows in the Highlands, where I, I come from anyway, because it's got to be a bit cold. We have various highlands in Malaysia. We have Cameron Highlands. We have um, Fraser's Hill. Uh, you can tell white people colonized us, right? Cameron Highlands. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we have we actually have Gunting Highlands, which is it, that, that one's ours. Uh, we built a casino on a on a sort of mountain thing. But yeah, Cameron Highlands is where we grow tea in Malaysia. It's also where we grow strawberries, but uh, because it's cold, it's up. I think it goes up to over 6,000 feet at its peak. But uh, because our highlands are cloudy and foggy, there's not enough sun, so our strawberries are sour. Strawberries require a lot of sunlight. Well, plants, like fruits require sunlight to become sweet. So if you grow it in a cold climate without sunlight, they become, they, well, they remain sour. Uh, Frank Muller says the, the guy in your commercials talk about Highland coffee. I'm pretty sure coffee doesn't require, coffee is a tropical thing, right? Does it require Highlands? I don't know. I've never actually looked up, because coffee comes from like Venezuela and Brazil, right? <laughs> maybe maybe Highlands coffee is something else. You grow it in a cold climate and it, it becomes a different kind of coffee. We're going to be here in one month. Okay. So, oh, look, the troops are just moving by themselves. Job vacancies? Why do we suddenly have workers needed? Oh, is it actually calling people out removes people from the workforce? Wow, would you look at this? This is something that Emperor needs. This is, this is what all these city building games need. An auto defend. Look at that. We, th so they know where the enemy is coming from? That's, that's amazing. I actually have a list of how to improve classic city builders. And one of them is being able to know where the invasion is coming from. Not for free. I, I, say, I recommend setting out a scout which costs money or something. Uh, but uh, we should know where the, the invasion is coming from because you could prep your troops here and then they invade from the other side of the map and you lose. This is amazing. So we can bribe them, but let's fight to defend the city. So 
When this invasion comes, do they just run into our troops or do our troops go to them? Because we're still on auto control here. It says automatically defend the city if invaded. Let's speed it up here. I know they sort of, they tend, like these troops tend to wander around a bit. So if I do nothing, what happens? Yeah, the enemy comes to our troops. Would you look at that? So do they go home by themselves as well? And let's check our employment. 86 workers needed. Are people moving out? Ah, the people are moving out. You can build a new commemorative monument so you'll always remember this great day. Alright, so the fight's over. One person's going home. But the rest of you? Shouldn't you guys be going home? We can do that. So it says 68 workers needed. If we... Oh, was that? Oh, hey! You can... Let me take control. So you can't click and drag, but you can click and drag here and move... Oh! Oh, wow! This is very much more like an RTS. Look at that! And then we can just muster them all. And this is definitely affecting 68 workers needed. Okay, maybe it doesn't affect. Two, no, it does. Unemployed. Calling people out affects your employment. That's, that's amazing. Like you gotta select one, but then you can select all. Huh. Why does Emperor not have this? Oh, does Emperor have this and I just don't know about it? No, Emperor, the military went back to the whole Pharaoh and Caesar method. This is really cool. Huh. Anyway, we can go to the next tutorial. The Warrior Society. I'm impressed by that. They, that, that should have maintained for, for Emperor. That's a good mechanic for military in games like this. The Warrior Society. Elite Warriors. So yeah, how do you get better troops? They actually come from elite housing. Armor. So you got to provide armor to the elite housing. And then you will get hoplites. Oh. Okay, so elite housing has a military... I love how military is tied into the society of the city. It's not a separate... Like, you don't build standing armies. People are the army. And that means even if you just have huts and shacks, you have a military. So if you're invaded without... Like, you, you don't know. Like, a, a sudden invasion happens. You will always have something. And defensive fortifications work the same, I think. Calling soldiers en masse. Call all, crew all, not manning buttons, military tab. Okay. Huh. Like 300. Well, it's all based on, on ancient Greek culture, isn't it? So if we go to military. So we're supposed to get elite housing, so I assume it's already prepped these spots for me. And there is actually an arms vendor. So that's a, the big agora for six slots. So there are six shops, one, two, three, four, five. There's one more we're not too sure about. There must be another resource after that, right? Or maybe it's just an extra slot, not too sure. I think they don't have it in Emperor because in China they had a professional army, in Greece they had citizen armies. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, the standing army concept is good, but mechanically speaking, this is better. This is more fun, this controls better, and it, from a gameplay perspective, this is more enjoyable. 
that's why. So I think the standing army mechanic, the problem with Emperor's standing army mechanic is only, it's, it's slightly better than Pharaoh and Caesar three, but it doesn't control nearly as well as this. So although the standing army concept is good, I think they should have improved the mechanic, the gameplay aspect. And by the way, that comment is from a name I can't read. I think that's Korean. Uh, Please tell me how to pronounce your name. I can't read uh, those characters. Ah, uh, so this is residences. The resident of this house can't make improvements until they receive some armor. So this needs more appeal to evolve. Let's just uh, spam gazebos on the other side of the road. So this is now a mansion, and they want wine. Oh, okay. So that must be the last shop, a wine shop. Okay. Uh, so... Does just having this gives us new troops? Yeah, look at that. We have... These are... Hoplites. I hope we see some action soon. This armor is starting to get itchy. The hounds. Huh. So we can leave these things out there and just tell them to go home, right? So I could select everyone, put them there. And we can like muster everyone. Huh. And then send everyone home. Can we... You employ special tactics. I don't know what that means. Defensive tactics. Marching. No, no. Offensive tactics. Defensive tactics. Hmm. So if I want to send everyone home, must all soldiers send them all home? Okay. Easy enough. Oh, crashing rocks. Jason and the Argonauts reference. Ah. I get the I get the reference now. Thank you, uh, Juri Amari. <laughs> so that's how we get elite soldiers. Okay, mythology. Yes, this is something I want to learn learn about. This is because this should be unique to Zeus. Well, now I know the the military system is also unique. This tutorial is comprised of two episodes. In the first episode, you'll learn how to worship Dionysus by building a sanctuary in his honor. In the second episode, you'll put this sanctuary to use for your city. The gods of Greece, gods of Crete, uh, crave the worship. Yeah, we haven't built any temples or anything yet. You can offer many things in return for your devotion. Gods will visit your city from time to time, extolling the many benefits they can provide for you should you choose to worship them. To worship a god, you must construct a sanctuary dedicated to him or her. This is no mean feat. Constructing a sanctuary requires marble, wood, and sculpture. Services of artisans. Quarrying the marble. Okay. So that is the quarry. Placing the sanctuary. Hiring artisans. Harvesting wood. Okay, so we just need to get all those industries going. So we can place industries along here. And we will need... Let's put the safety building first. Maintenance office right there. We need a storage building right here. So this is going to store marble and wood. To place down sanctuaries, we need eight marble just to place it. Okay, industries, raw materials. So we got timber mills. We got masonry shops. That seems good. Four masonry shops, two uh, timber mills. How's the employment? Still good. All right, so we can speed things along. What else was it telling us about? Timber mills, harvesting wood, hiring artisans. Artisans guilds. Okay, so I guess we should build it along here, right? So we can do that. Place down those artisans. We need a few more people. 
So we'll squeeze in a couple houses since there is space for them. Get more people moving in. And just fill that up with uh, parks. Golden time in your city is people are very happy so that you'll remember the special time you can now build a commemorative monument. Happiness monument. Ah, that should solve the, the, the appeal problem. Back here. So I'm just going to place this there. Fill the rest of this up with parks. Okay. So all of this, we've got sculptures going already. I think we're, we're importing bronze. Yeah, we're buying bronze. And we just have one sculpture studio. I guess we should uh, boost the sculpture studio production a bit there. Just to make sure we always have sculptures. Okay, so marble and wood are coming in. Good. The max level for elite housing are estates. Aphrodite's benefit is that citizens won't ever leave your city while she is worshipped. How am I liking Zeus so far? Quite a lot. There are differences I was not expecting. I see this is very much a transition between Pharaoh to Emperor. I see where a lot of Emperor's mechanics come from. I'm Dionysus, god of the vine. Worship me, and fruits of the vine will burst forth. Hmm. You'll also be able to harvest grapes from my own vineyard. And all the vines in your city will yield more grapes. So, we can't... We can't put down. We have no orchards here. Oh, is that him? Dionysus, god of the vine, friendly god. So what does he do? Does he give people wine? It doesn't seem like it. Not sure what he's doing in the city. But we have eight marble, so we can put down the Grove of Dionysus. We can rotate it, okay. We'll put it right there. Because that's where the marble wood's coming from, the sculptures, and we have all these artisans. And look at that. So this works similarly to monument building in, uh, yeah, Pharaoh and Emperor monument buildings like this. There are no monuments in Caesar 3, right? I forgot. Most useless god. <laughs> so, yeah, the sculptures... Oh, we're selling the sculptures, are we? Oh yeah, we're selling sculptures. It's fine. 24 slabs of marble, 8 loads of wood, 2 sculptures. Yeah, we should get that pretty soon. 21 workers needed. I think we could... Uh, are people moving in? Oh, there's plenty of room for people to move in. So, we just have to get this up, right? This temple has grapevines you can harvest from. So, if there are missions where we can't construct grapevines, building a, a statue, uh, this, this sanctuary to Dionysus, gives us wine, basically. Huh, that's interesting. And these apartments are... these townhouses have everything they need. Okay, so this is max level housing. Good to know. Is this... This needs more marble, really. Does it have all the wood? We have all the wood we need. We could just speed this up a little bit. Putting down one more masonry shop. Are these... what are these waiting for? This city is superb. I hope I live as long as Nestor to enjoy it. And I hope you live as long as Nestor to rule it. Fantastic. Is this almost done? No, it's uh, 12 slabs of marble, two sculptures. The sculptures haven't arrived yet. Oh, there we go. There's the sculptures. So that's Dionysus. Two statues of him. Same with Athena and olives. Ah, so Athena has olive groves. That's good to know.
He must be... Just a bit more? Yeah. Ooh, that's a big slab of marble. A huge statue to Dionysus. Look at that. Just three statues to him. And just needs four slabs of marble. Fantastic. And it's on the way, so we can cut back on the marble production. We can drop our wages. Dionysus, god of the vine, raises his cup to you because you have completed a sanctuary in his honor. He has planted fruitful vines near his sanctuary to help make sure that wine in your city never ceases to flow. The great god's presence has put everyone in the city in a good mood, and residents will never rise up and commit crimes. So here he is. He actually joins the city permanently. So we can pray to Dionysus. Dionysus has heard your prayer, but you don't have room for wine. He might fulfill your prayer later. Huh. So we can pray to him and he'll give us stuff. Dionysus is off partying somewhere and won't fulfill your prayer. You might have better luck later. Okay, so these are actual grapevines. So if we... Oh, look at that. Excellent job. Completed it. Sanctuary to Dionysus. It mentioned this was going to be a multi-part thing. So let's just uh, proceed. Episode 2 of the Mythology Tutorial. You'll be shown an introduction screen. Blah, blah, blah. Olympian gods. They have their own agenda and rarely get along with one another. With an adventure, whatever your adventure you undertake, some gods will support your efforts while others will seek to thwart you. Those on your side, like Dionysus, periodically appeal to, appeal to you for worship, encouraging you to build a sanctuary. Oh, that's what he did earlier when he first appeared. Those who oppose you may not make their presence known until you do something to offend them. Sacrifices and sanctuary benefits. A sanctuary needs regular sacrifices to function so that its god can appear in the city, walk the streets, and sanctify certain buildings. Each god also provides other benefits. For example, at Dionysus's sanctuary, you can grow grapevines, which can be turned into wine at a winery. You can also pray for wine. You'll need to tell uh, need some growers to tend the grapevines. Okay. Growers from the lodge will tend, prune, and harvest the grapes, deliver them to a winery or storehouse, making wine, wineries. Okay. Monsters and heroes. If a cyclops happens to show up, you can call upon the legendary hero Odysseus to deal with the matter. Once you get word that the one-eyed beast is on his way, build a hero's hall for Odysseus by clicking on a hero's hall button in the mythology tab. Heroes are in high demand throughout Greece, so you can't build a hall unless you really need the hero. You won't be able to call Odysseus until you've prepared the city to meet his high standards. Huh. Right-click the hall to call him. Don't worry if it takes you some time to get rid of the Cyclops. In this episode, he's mostly interested in your sheep. He'll occupy himself flattening them with his club for a while. Of course, you got to get rid of your city's monsters, but don't be surprised if the Cyclops' father, the god Poseidon, has something to say about this. Huh. If a god like Poseidon feels the need to attack your city, only another more powerful god may combat him. Zeus is the only god strong enough to stand up to his brother Poseidon, but you, can, you can't build a sanctuary for Zeus in this tutorial. Stick around to experience Poseidon's rage, and when you've had enough, you're ready to move on. Okay, so this is all new. So, he just gave us a bunch of wine. Fantastic. So we can actually get rid of these artisan guilds now. 9% unemployment. So we need to put down some Growers Lodge. I guess four is probably more than enough. Um, industry, workshops, there should be wineries. Okay, so we'll get wine going. Now it said we could make sacrifices, but... No sacrifices can be conducted, okay. So Dionysus actually goes around blessing these structures. And sometimes giving us free wine. Comparing Zeus, Caesar, Pharaoh, and Emperor, which is your favorite so far? I 
I have the most nostalgic connection to Caesar 3. I think Emperor has the most refined mechanics. And I like all the mythology stuff in Zeus. But so far, like if the wonder construction feels a bit lackluster so far, I'm not sure if there are more special wonders later on. The Cyclops is on his way to the city in only four months he'll begin his rampage. Okay, so to battle the Cyclops you may now construct Odysseus's hall to bring the traveler to your city. So it should be under mythology. Hero's hall. Hero fall for Hero's Hall for Odysseus. Okay, and it said we had to Ah, we need eight elite houses. Okay, let's slow the game down. We have three so far. So we need to... Two, three, they're four by four, right? Let's just... Uh, so we have three, four, five, six. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We actually need space for one more. Can I... maybe if I move this around a little bit. I'm assuming these fish ponds are like large statues. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, so there's just gonna be... We can actually move this. Oh, there's a, there's a thing there. The road actually. Okay, just give me a second. I'm gonna get these down. There's a gap there. Okay. One, two... Okay, wait. That's... That's not a high appeal area. So, we need... We can place that there. And we need... We really can't... That's not high enough appeal. Lots of fish ponds. Now that should do it. How is that still not high appeal? We have pretty much infinite money, so there. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we need eight elite housing before we can call for Odysseus. Because we already got the wine. I think because we prayed to Dionysus earlier. So now we just have to speed it up and exalt it. In one month, the Cyclops will be here. Right. There are bigger, better wonders to construct. They can take a long time, take a lot of resources. Okay, great. That's what I'm looking for. Because uh, Pharaoh and Emperor have fantastic wonders. And I hope Zeus has big wonders as well. Odysseus won't help you if there's not enough rich people. Who would though? <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's, I'm assuming it means it, it's, it's, it needs to take his time. Anyway, the Cyclops is here. There he is. Poor sheep. Smash, smash, smash. <laughs> okay, so do we have all the elite housing moved in yet? Not yet. 32 jugs of olive oil. Oh, we, we're short on olive oil? Oh, I did not know that. Let's make a bit more room for olive oil. And just in case, let's... Uh, can we stockpile olive oil? Okay, there, now it's stockpiling. But we actually have plenty of spare, so we don't have to stockpile. There we go! We got eight elite houses, send for Odysseus. Okay. We can speed it up now. Let's see how Odysseus uh, deals with the Cyclops. The world-renowned Odysseus, king of Ithaca, is here. 
There he is, King of Ithaca. So, there he is. Penelope will have to wait a long time before she sees me again. This city is so great. Odysseus. So, does he just like... I can't control him, right? No, I can't. I guess he just... Walks over. Does this Cyclops... I think in the real camp... Oh, he does kill people. These are all goats. Oh, there's goats and sheep. Every man and goat for himself. Run! Look at that. There's voice acting for this. Wow. Okay. So we got goat and sheep. Yeah, I think. Yeah, one's for dairy. Well, he's going off to chase some of my guys here. Ooh, nasty. Look at that. Odysseus, you're gonna... You're gonna deal with this? Do you have to walk to your hero's hall first? He's just killing all my shepherds. Okay. Odysseus. The only room for the Penelope will have to wait. Penelope, Penelope. That's will all he says. Penelope. <laughs> before she sees me again. This all right. City is so great. So he just walks on over and kills the Cyclops. Right? I've seen worse trouble in my travels. Smash, smash. I've seen worse trouble in my travels. Just like the epics, look at that. He's dead. Cyclops has collapsed, victory is sweet. Penelope will have to wait a long Penelope. time before she sees me again. This city is so great. 35 workers needed. Oh. I wonder if that actually, I didn't check whether that was counting towards... Um... My population. Every time he killed someone. Let's replace the sheep and goats. You have Ooh. made me your enemy, and I shall make the sea your enemy too. It will be completely inhospitable to you and your and swallow up anything that depends on on, on it. The, whether it be humble urchin collector, fishing boat, mighty war vessel. I'll also see that no one comes to the city by sea. So it's just like. Neptune in Caesar 3. The same sort of curse, but uh, the gods sort of come alive in this one. Is he here? I, I see something on the map there. It's like a little green dot. Oh, here he comes. There he is. It's Poseidon. You have made me your enemy, and I shall make the sea your enemy too. Same god, different name, same curse as well. <laughs> so it just messes stuff up. Would you look at that? Is that gonna destroy? What are those? The fishery is cursed. Try as they might, the fishermen here cannot catch any fish. And they won't until the curse is lifted. And off he goes. Well, this has been an insightful thing. I think it said we can't defeat him. So we just got to go to the next tutorial. Yeah, let's... We are actually producing wine as well, right? We are actually, yeah, we are harvesting grapes. Okay, next. That was very interesting. Preparing for the colony. In this tutorial, you'll start with an already thriving city and learn how to establish a colony to serve its needs. There are three episodes in this tutorial. In the second episode, you'll leave the parent city, Megara, to actually build the colony, setting goods aside for the colony. You often have to set aside goods in preparation for the starting of a colony. You have to move on to establish a colony. You'll need to set aside eight and four of wine. Planting grapevines, making wine, yep. Setting aside, we actually have to set aside button at the top of this panel. So it'll be here. Okay, so we gotta get wine. Where's the... Okay, the meadow is over here. 
Orchards. Grape vines. Boom. There we go. Build a road. Build a maintenance office. Build some growers lodge. Build some, uh, where is it? No, it's here. Workshop, wineries. And we'll need, uh, I'm totally over overdoing this. But I'm gonna put that there and this is gonna accept just wine. Okay, fantastic. And we can speed up the game. Because all we need is uh, eight amphora of wine. So we, we put down eight workshops there. 51 workers needed. Let's boost our wage rates. It gives us a nice enough city to start with. Pretty much infinite money. All right. So we just got to watch the grapes get done. If only growing grapes was as simple as this. <laughs> well, uh, uh, it does need to be simplified somewhat for a game. Ah, all right. We've been going for almost, we're approaching two hours now, but I'm just going to keep this all one part on the channel because it's just me going through the tutorial. When I come to actually playing the game, I'm going to keep it similar to my other series, no face cam, it's going to be pre-recorded and stuff because I expect the missions do need to be cut and edited. Otherwise, there's a lot of waiting around. But I wanted to go through this process with you guys because you guys are telling me stuff that I, I wouldn't be able to figure out. And it's always nice to go through a learning experience with you because it's more fun and interactive that way. Is Zeus going to replace Pharaoh playthrough? Are you going to keep working on it? I'm going to eventually come back to Pharaoh. The problem is... There's the grapes coming in there. Pharaoh missions now take upwards of 8, sometimes 10, 12 hours just for one mission. And that's... It, that's not just a long time. It, it doesn't just take up a long time. It's actually very stressful. It's mentally stressful and it's actually physically stressful because I can't, like, I really, if I, oh, there's the, the wine coming in there. Uh, that means we've actually got enough set aside and we win, basically. Uh, it's mentally stressful playing for those long missions. Sometimes you play for four hours and then you fail. So if I play and then fail, then it could take 16, 20 hours total to make one video. And that's very stressful. And it often requires sitting down and playing and commentating and trying to get through the mission for hours at a time. Even if I split, split the recording up to multiple, multiple sessions, it's still three, four hours per time. It's very stressful. So I'm starting up Zeus because the starting missions are always pretty easy. So at least I can fill the rest of this year, rest of 2016, with some classic city building. Because there's like, what, eight weeks left to the year? If I do eight missions of Zeus, I'll fill the year. At least it's something to, to get, get going. Live streaming Zeus campaign is also good. Yeah, I mean, there, there are certain things I like to live stream, but I like my tutorials as they're sort of... I, I like my... sorry, I like my city building videos because they're sort of like tutorials. And uh, I don't like changing the format of a show halfway through. So if I do face cam at the start, and then I get to a mission which takes six hours in, to complete, I don't want to live stream one mission for six hours. But this tutorial, I assume it'll take two-ish hours. And uh, we can just... That, that's good, right? We won? Yeah, we won. <laughs> so we set aside that for a colony. You're ready to leave Megara to establish a colony. While you're doing so, the governor Aristides will administer Megara for you. You're about to see a map of the Pan-Hellenic world to choose a site on which to establish a colony. In this tutorial, you'll only see one site available, Halicarnassus. Halicarnassus. When you see it, click on it. Okay, so we actually have to establish a colony. Normally you'll have more than one site to choose from when establishing a colony, but here only Halicarnassus is available. The site offers good soil for wheat farming and has some deposit of silver and copper ore. All right, so we actually have to set up like a sub-city. Okay, 
I wonder if this is how the campaign works. Huh. In Zeus you have several short campaigns, not only a long one. Yeah, it's sort of like, well, I'm assuming that's like dynasties, right? Like, I know Caesar 3 is just one long campaign, but Pharaoh and Emperor have dynasties. Getting started. Okay. Farming. So, wheat farms. Okay. So, does this function like normal farms? Mining silver... Into coins. So, this is the money-making. That's like gold, right? Or the mint in Emperor. Right, it's a, it's a mint. Uh, don't need to place a mint right next to the silver ore. Okay, making requests. We can request things. To develop some of this colony's housing into apartments, which we do need, you'll need fleece and oil. You can't import these items, but you can requisition them from parent city Megara or request them from your ally Mantinea. So we actually have to ask for things. Okay, shows information on the world map. Storehouse to receive any goods you request. Requesting military aid. With only a rabble at your disposal. No elite housing, right? Returning the favor. Give gifts back, I guess. Or just fulfilling their requests. How other leaders regard you. There's a little thing for the relationships. Step 5. Mining copper and making bronze. Setting goods aside. So we need to... Right. 16 sheaves of wheat, 8 bars of bronze, 100 people in apartment or better. Easy enough. So... That is copper. That is silver. Here's the meadow. Do we have water crossings? It's usually under administration. Water crossings. We have a little bridge there. Okay, let's get over to this side. And I'm just going to build straight on the farmland, because it's not efficient, but I'm going to do it. Five, six, seven, eight. Let's just get all this population going. And we'll put another row, row of houses here. So we need to produce wheat, right? Farms, wheat farms. So these are just normal farms. Okay. I guess we'll get six. Seems reasonable enough. We'll have the road come down like this. Extend like that. Roadblock there. And uh, safety. We need to get maintenance offices going. And here we need a fountain and a watch post. Okay, let's speed up the game. Now, where are people coming from? There they are. A new city, a new home, and maybe a new job. Fortune is smiling upon me. So I was talking about voice acting earlier. That guy, he's going for the no vocal fry. Word is that there are plenty of jobs here for anyone who wants one. Okay. That that, vo that line has a bit of vocal fry, but you can see he's going very for the, you know, a new city, a new job. Minimizing the vocal fry on that one. <laughs> Average of eight missions per campaign, with some being quite short. In Pharaoh, you have to do them in chronological order, because they're dynasties basically in this one it isn't the case there's like separate campaigns for these missions okay anyway people moving in here uh let's raise the wage rate we're gonna need a granary which we'll place right here that is just accepting wheat we also need a storehouse six crates of food 13 months to comply Okay, we're gonna need, let's see if this works, we're gonna get 16. And how much did it ask for? Let's set it to 24. Uh, the request was here, that says 13. I think it was, was it 13? We got 100 people in. Um, 
six crates of food. Oh, that's a number of months, right? So we need six crates of food. It doesn't actually say six, does it? Oh, there, it shows the requests, okay. Would I possibly live stream sandbox missions? Yeah, I think sandbox missions are sort of what we can do in terms of live streaming this sort of content. Just like a sandbox mission. Uh, are we gonna get six from this? We just got enough. Yeah, dispatch those. Good thing I built six farms. Need more people. Oh no, we have unemployment. That's good. Few more people moving in, which means we should be able to support an infirmary. That's 11 people. Yeah. Uh, Money-wise, we need to set up these silver mints over there. But I think we're producing enough food here. Yeah, we're p producing plenty of food. We can go ahead and put down the common agora. Asking for things from other cities can really anger them, so you should send gifts whenever you can. They might turn their backs to you, right? Let's have a look. So we are here. So they sell olive oil. They produce wine. They sell fleece and wine. So did it actually disable trade? Yeah, it disabled trade. So we have to ask them for it. Uh, Aristides of Megara, think more highly of you. Let's go ahead and put down another storehouse for things. So this is gonna accept olive oil and fleece, 16 each. And this is gonna get 16 and just in case, a bit more olive oil and fleece. Actually just accept, no, no, we need the space. So we can put 8 and 8, depending on how much they give. Okay. So those are our allies, right? They're sympathetic. They will be willing to fulfill your request for food and perhaps even goods, if they can spare the item. Let's try. This is a tutorial. Um, request olive oil. They give wine. Okay, we don't need wine. Let's try request fleece. Now you can request defensive aid and stuff as well. We're just going to send out those requests. Now we just need food to come in so we can set it aside and start feeding our people. It angers the all the other neighbors too. What if you uh, like if you piss off one person, does it piss off the other cities if they're friends? I'm not sure. Anyway, when is the next harvest season? July? Yeah, we gotta speed things along, because, uh... Though you are far away from us, everyone in your parent city of Megara agrees we think the world of you. I, Aristides, am proud to be your deputy. Oh, fantastic. Um... Namia wants wine? In four months? Um, ah! 24 jugs of olive oil, thank you very much. 24 skins of fleece, thank you very much. Let's see if we can actually get that uh, that wine. We're gonna put this down. This is just gonna accept wine. And wait, Namiya was the one who requested wine. Wait, no, um, Megara sells wine as well. Can we request wine? Let's see if we get wine in time to fulfill that request to Namiya. Otherwise, they'll probably attack and we have to bribe them anyway, but uh, it's going to be fine. Now we're waiting for July for food to come in, and there we go, we got the wine. So we can send it off to Nemea. Fantastic, avoided the invasion. Now distribution, we can put down the f vendors we need. There's a food vendor, there's a fleece vendor, there's an oil vendor that will... we can also... Do we have enough people? 34 workers needed. I'm just gonna go ahead and... Actually, no, we should try out these industries. If I clear out these trees... 
just build a road here. Get a maintenance office. And we can start with some of these. The mint and the foundry. So we do actually need some eight bars of bronze, right? So we can... S the mint, I suppose, just starts making money, right? Holds silver. So let's go to distribution, storehouse. Gonna place this here. This is accepting bronze. Which we need eight of. We'll get that started. Is food coming in soon? It's May... Uh, July. In just six months, an army of rival Greeks from Nemea will arrive to attack your city. We gave you wine. Why are you still attacking us? Ah. Okay, food's coming in. Finally, we get the food set aside there. Let the rest go into the granary. That should be enough to feed these people. Okay, I won't dispatch the food quite yet. I'll let the food distribute to all of these. Needs more culture venues to evolve. Aesthetics, let's just drop down these parks as well. And more culture. There's... Oh, we haven't put any culture down. So let's put down the gymnasium. Which we can fit right there. And we can put down a college. And a podium. What else do these need to evolve? More people are moving in. Fantastic. Because we need the, the workforce. <laughs> um, I'll forego the palace for now. I think that's all they need. To evolve to the maximum level of housing. Yeah, so we just need to... Get these foundries going. That should do. And we can place more mints, which will, I assume, get us more money. Short by 118 workers? No problem. And look at that. In one month, they'll arrive. I assume we can bribe them. Need more culture venues evolve. Requires oil. Okay, that's fine. We can now set aside that wheat. That's good. We got plenty of oil and wine and fleece, thanks to our requests. Might want to save the game just in case. I'm sure it'll be fine. You need a palace if you want to defend. Yeah. Bribe 350 drachmas. Yeah, I assumed we could just bribe them. I can build a monument because I bribed them. Victory monument. Look at this. It's going right there. And just for... Ooh, avenues. Let's uh, make this road pretty. And I assume we just need to boost desirability for all of this back here. Too close to enemy troops. Oh, they were boats. Look at that. <laughs> they were actually coming by sea. I did not know. So they just left. So these need more culture venues. Are there more culture venues? Gymnasium, college podium, philosophers, athletes. Are these what we need? Apartments. Oh, they are apartments. Oh, look at that. Okay. So now we just need the bronze. How's their employment? 46 workers needed. More people are moving in. Look at those miners just going at it. 500 people, fantastic. These are all apartments, extra room for basically doubling or tripling our population from here. That's very good. Requesting of goods is very powerful. We can just request money as well, right? Like if I were to request drachmas, they'll just give it to us, right? As long as they like us enough. Come on, get the, the bronze in. We've got... Five, that's six, that's seven, just need one more. There we go, that's eight. Fantastic, set aside. Mission complete. 
Easy enough. Well done. Now that you've established a thriving colony at Halicarnassus, our parent city Megara will have a source of wheat and bronze. You'll return to Megara now while your trusted governor Roka administers the colony for you. Okay. Putting the colony to work. So we went out, made a colony, came back. And we need to support four horsemen. Making armor. Okay, we've done that before. Elite households need armor so their occupants can equip themselves as warriors. That's how you get hoplites raising horses. Wealthiest residents of your city can afford to keep their own horses, which they'll proudly ride into battle as horsemen. Huh. Importing wheat from Halicarnassus. It will be delivered to the horse ranch from the trading post. Horsemen need armor, wine, and of course horses. Okay. So we got plenty of wine here, but we need to actually get the wine down to this area to get it to our people. So let's build a road and we'll roadblock that. These are... What's the objective? Support four horsemen? We got elite housing. That should be enough, right? Uh, they need armor. Okay, so what trade routes do we have here? We're not selling... We're not buying, buying olives to make... Oil? Okay. Oh, look at that. There's little, like, gardens around the, the oil factories. Um, let's look at our trade. Halicarnassus should be open for trade now. Back to city. Uh, distribution, trade, pier. Uh, nice of them to make that there. We can import wheat and bronze. Let's make sure it doesn't overload. It's 36 a year and 24 a year. Okay, and we can now put down workshops, which are... No, no, no. We don't need sculptures. We need armories. Four, I guess? And then we'll put down a... A storehouse right here. Which is gonna keep armor. And there's a arms vendor here. We also need a wine vendor right there. And a horse trainer. Oh, so horses. Are those six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Food, fleece, oil, arms, wine, horse. Okay. So I assume horse ranch. Can we just uh, fit two here? This should work. So we're importing wheat, which is sent to the horse ranch, and the this city truly is a utopia, and I can't think of a wiser leader. The horses should go to the marketplace, providing horses and wine to these guys and armor. All right, we've got wine, we've got armor on the way, and we've got horses on the way. Fantastic. We can speed up. All right. Masake Inoue, you just finished the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare campaign. Was it good? I'm not a huge COD fan. The last Call of Duty I played was uh, the World War II one. Um, I think it was just called Call of Duty. <laughs> Did I watch the intro cinematic of the creation of the world? Uh, I, I have watched it. It wasn't on the stream, but it will be on episode one when I do mission one. Uh, please announce we can sell you more jars of olives. Oh, fantastic. Okay, look, we got some horses. And we got... We got this guy. Move along, little doggies. These well-bred horses are sure to be exactly what my demanding customers want. A southern American accent for the horses. Well, for the horse guy, not for the horses. <laughs> Masake, anyway, the Call of Duty Internet Warfare campaign was good. I've heard it's it's good. It feels like Destiny. Hmm, interesting. I, I have not played Destiny or any of the modern Call of Duties, so I wouldn't be able to say much on it. Anyway, we have wine. These are... Needs horses to evolve. This one has... Estate. The residents of this house have everything they need. So there's six resources. It's very clear and easy to understand, resources in Zeus. I'm not sure if it's... Uh, Different from Emperor, but it seems so easy to understand. We have six resources, three for lower level housing, and then three more for higher level housing. That means we are currently supporting three horses here. We just need to... 
Why is it three? Oh, there's two horses. Oh, each of these can support. Oh, you can actually see there's two horses there. There's one horse there. Each of these, is, um, this is a estate. Oh, it's nice. They look different as well. The estates can support two horses each. This one is just short by one horse because, yeah, we can only pick up two horses at a time. What's this? You're unable to accept my tribute of eight bars of bronze. I'll return home. Okay, that's fine. I didn't know there was a request. Or rather, uh, a gift. So, more horses are on the way here, and that means... Oh, it means we should have... Cavalry. Look at that, we got cavalry. Oh, fantastic. Go back. So, we're gonna distribute a few more horses here. We should have... Yeah, that should do it, right? Yeah, five supported. Fantastic, we did it. Doyle Raymond, I seem so lively during these streams. Well, it's uh, it's a bit of practice, <laughs> but it's also um, it's why I like making episodes through live streams rather than pre-recording, because uh, live streaming means I interact with you, and just the interaction, knowing people are watching right now, I can talk to you, you're replying things, it uh, it uh, it feels more lively. And because it feels more lively, I am more lively. That's why live streaming is different content from pre-recorded stuff. Anyway, you can run a city well enough to support elite warriors like hoplites and horsemen. You'll be truly respected throughout the Greek world. Proceed. You have earned experience what it's like to establish colonies abroad, able to interact with the other cities of the world. The next tutorial will test your mettle in some tricky political situations. Rule Nemea. We gotta conquer. All right, so in Emperor, you had this conquering mechanic. And I see it comes from Zeus. Greek politics can be both dangerous and lucrative. You need to depend on your allies and subjects if you are able, if you are to survive and prosper in this world and find success on your many adventures. To complete this episode, you'll need to conquer your rival, the city of Nemea. And you may not, not be able to do this without some help. Allies, rivals, subjects, interacting with other cities, conquests. I think this is pretty much the same as Emperor. Subjects and tribute, right? You can be conquered, conducting raids, plunder, making demands. Okay. So, we are here. We need to conquer Nemea. I'm sure there's a conquer button here. Raid the city, conquer the city. If I raid the city, okay. Conquer. So currently, we only have the wild boars, but we have Halicarnassus as an ally, which can help us. I guess we're, we're supposed to get some horseman troop going. Let's buy wheat. Are we already buying bronze? We are already buying bronze. We got plenty of weapons there. Let's get the horse ranches going. Can I? Yeah, let's move this road over a bit. Get two horse ranches down. And we can go ahead and put down the shops. Uh, do we not have wine? Oh no, the wine's there. Okay, fantastic. Uh, the wine vendor and the horse trainer. Get those houses evolved. And we can speed things along. We just need... Why is there... There is wheat. They are training horses. Okay. And there's already wine and weapons there. Willing to buy more pieces of sculpture, that's fine. Okay, good. I, I think this is uh, close to the end of the tutorial, I think. I'm not too sure. It seems like we've been going for a while. We've been going for about two hours now. I just have to... Are these... They're estates. We got horses. Fantastic. Are they all supporting four horses? Oh, there's four horses in each one. I thought it was two. It's four. So now... If we look at Namiya, conquer the city. We're gonna send those, the wild boars of pythons. We can send allies. We have no hoplites or phalanxes because they're all horsemen. Fantastic. Dispatch, I guess. We'll see if this works. Go conquer. Look at them going, all those horses. So there's four horsemen from each estate. Plus I've got uh, 
help from Halicarnassus. Seems good. We just wait for the result. <laughs> it worked! Did it. Namiya has fallen before the might of your military forces. You've got what it takes to become a truly great leader. Proceed. You have learned all you need to know to survive in the dog-eat-dog, dog, or is it god-eat-god, god, world of Greece. The next and final tutorial presents a large prosperous city for your observation. So it's just look at the city. Wonders of Greece is the final tutorial for Zeus, Master of Olympus. Here you find a large prosperous city for you to explore and study. Complete sanctuaries dedicated to Apollo and Ares. Patrol the streets. Mm -hmm. Hints and tips. Suck up to your neighbors, but to your rivals, see into the future. The Oracle of Apollo and Zeus Stronghold contain oracles that can predict the future. Wow. Pray to the gods. Don't forget to pray to the gods. Listen to the people. Lay out roads carefully. Decrease walker travel distance. Use foresight and city planning. Pace yourself. Take your time. Using culture venues. Oh, it actually explains. Look at this. It explains destination walker. This needs to be explained in every one of these games. Destination Walker, it's right there. Watch your money, export, shift labor. Send your trireme workers home. I never built any boats, I just realized. Protect your palace, moving your entire military. Leave standards in the field, working with earthquake cracks. Short bridges can be built over straight sections of earthquake cracks. Look at that. You can do that in Caesar 3. So this is what's considered a decent city. This tutorial is fantastic. This tutorial actually teaches you everything you need to know about city builders. I see why... Oh, look at that. Turned up quite nicely there. I see why so many people love Zeus. It's actually the only one that explains how these mechanics work. This is fantastic. And this is the final mission. Look at that, there's Apollo. Apollo, rather. I love watching mortals at their games, play-acting, pontificating, and athleticizing. Apollo is probably the douchiest of the gods. But, Ares is kind of a rival. Look at that, he's got a dragon. Oh, he's gone. Okay. So we can pray to them? Heard your prayer, eager to go to war with your soldiers? Consult Oracle. The mysterious and enigmatic Oracle has nothing to predict at this time. Okay, pray. Uh, heal your sick. Can't fulfill it yet. I think that's the end of the tutorial. It is. Looks good. I think I've learned how to play Zeus. I think I know the new mechanics well enough to start up a nice playthrough. There is... There aren't any enemies on our waters right now, but we're ready for them when they do come. Revenge. I could shift some labor. Are we not manning? Okay, we can crew all, but it takes up a hundred people. Wow, okay. Nice we can turn that on and off, though. There's a, there's a dragon. Wow, and there's Ares. Come along, my fire-breathing friend. Maybe we can find something for you to attack. And there you have it. Did it. Can we... That's the tutorial. Look at this messed up menu, thanks to the widescreen fixer. Game looks great, menu's a bit wonky. And that is a tutorial for Zeus, Master of Olympus, the classic city builder from Impressions games. I've never played Zeus before. But this is gonna be an interesting experience. I'm gonna try and make Enough episodes to at least fill 2016. There are two flags in Ares Temple you can click to control. Oh, there's units. There's actually an army unit with Ares' temple. Fascinating. Anyway, I think that's good for now. We've been streaming for just over two hours now. Two hours to get through the tutorial. Sorry if you're just joining. The stream's actually coming to a close. <laughs> uh, I do start about two to two and a half hours before now, in case you're wondering. But that is Zeus, Massive Olympus. I think I can start up city building Saturdays again. So on Saturdays, I will upload a mission of Zeus. One a week, 
Some are longer than others. How did I get this game? It is for sale on GOG.com. Caesar 3, Pharaoh, and Zeus are all there. Emperor is unfortunately not there. Emperor, you have to find your own way to get it. It's out there. Uh, there's licensing issues, I think, because Emperor was developed by multiple companies. More, well, more than uh, the previous ones. There's also the Poseidon campaign. That's like saying there's also the Cleopatra campaign. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. The Poseidon campaign... No idea when or if I will do it. Could be three years from now. I've been doing Pharaoh for years now. It's still not done. It depends how long. I'm going to Zeus now because Pharaoh and Emperor missions are just taking way too long that it's too much mental and physical stress to do them at this point for the channel. Zeus, new experience. Shorter missions. Nice little fun campaign. We'll start with an easy one. We'll get some classic city building going. The Norway Civ 6 livestream soon. Next weekend, I'm thinking. Next weekend. We can start that up. Just get a bit further along in the China campaign and then start up Norway as a live stream. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it. My name's been GamerZack, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!